Today I'm in the office of Maker Studios, one of the largest multi-channel networks on YouTube. We're going to take a tour of their production facilities and talk to COO Courtney Holt about how they differentiate themselves from the other networks. In gaming, we work with guys like uh, PewDiePie. In comedy, we're working with guys like Bobby Lee, and we have Snoop Dogg. The Epic Rap Battle is working with guys like Nice Peter and Epic Lloyd. In women's lifestyle, we have uh, Andrea's Choice and Makeup by Camilla and a number of great moms channels. So again, we have a fairly broad palette of talent that we're working with. All right, so now we're in Maker's production space. Um, so. Tell me a little bit about this building and sort of how you built this out to do production here. Yeah, so the idea is that we wanted to scale production. You know, I said earlier, like Maker's DNA is rooted in production and figuring out a way to do it at, at you know, high quality at lower cost. We built this entire facility with that in mind. So we've got three sound stages. Uh, we've got uh, one that's more of an insert stage, a green screen stage, and we've got sort of a main studio space, and we can basically produce virtually anything here. Mm -hmm. um, we've got sets, props, wardrobe, hair and makeup, all the functions of a traditional studio are here. And I've always said, like, it's like a studio lot got yeah. shrunk and made okay. really efficient. So we have everything that you would find on a, on a lot like Paramount or Sony down the street. It's just here and contained in a building and really optimized for the type of video that we make. So we got an insert stage. Obviously, something interesting was going on here last we were, last we were in here. Um, but this is meant to do you know small and contained productions here. Over here, we have a, a green screen stage, and we can do all the compositions that you need to do special effects. We obviously have on site all the equipment that you would need to be able to produce anything: okay. um, lights, cameras, uh, gels, etc. Okay. So you can see over here we've got a post production unit. An idea can be developed, produced, and published, mm -hmm. all without leaving the building. Everything is modular, so whatever you see here, the, the sets, the, the floor, all of it can be pulled up, and in back we have a storage area, and a lot of these sets will be recycled. So, you know, this is a show we're doing every week, so this set will be, could be broken down to accommodate another shoot, but then if we had to put it back up tomorrow, another day, it's very easy for us to do it and everything is stored. And we also, in addition to keeping sort of the structured show sets, you might find that we have things that show up now and again. Or if we have to make something specifically, like if we had to make a jail set, we would save that set so if it ever came up again, we'd have it archived. And again, these things fold down to you know, a flat. It's very small, and so we can stack them and store them and catalog them, and so it's very easy for us to, to recycle them whenever we need to, to use a set. Awesome. Yeah, so Maker is a four-year-old company. We're actually four years old this month. And the company is really rooted in, this, this, uh, in, in the ecosystem of YouTubers. I mean, the, the founding team that started Maker started publishing videos as early as 2005 and early 2006. And they were using YouTube mainly as a mechanism to build their personal brands and to get noticed. They fell into like-minded creators, and they, over time, established this, this sort of consortium of people. And they realized that you know, producing for YouTube is sort of a lonely proposition. Can we combine our resources and efforts and best practices? And so I'm not my own camera person, editor, social media marketer, all of it. How can we leverage each other's strengths and build this community and turn it into a business? And so it started with this idea of a collaborative channel called The Station, which launched in 2009. The founding teams and talent had contributed both money from, you know, sourcing a brand deal. They threw all the money into the company, hired a few friends, and they started Maker. So it was really rooted in this idea of a studio. How do you become you know, part of the network or be one of the folks that contributed to Well, there's a couple different ways. I mean, like we, we have obviously talent acquisition teams. There are people that are out there looking for talent, and we, we approach people that we think could be interesting, either to join the network in terms of a general partnership or possibly to program with us, because we still do a large amount of programming um, around our owned and operated channels and so we built out a series of verticals that we have operating at scale gaming and music and moms and women's lifestyle and animation um, and comedy those are our big our, our big consumer facing brands and verticals and so we approach talent to join these communities and be part of our programming strategy but we also sign up network talent so Somebody can partner with Maker by literally going to our website and joining the network, and we, we ensure they are 
legitimately who they are, we ensure they're not violating any copyright, and then we can pro bring them into the network and we can put them through a, you know, I, I call it like an uh, R&D process, a network development process to help them grow their audience. Then we can also migrate them into other prop opportunities as they grow and they scale. So it's meant to be a very collaborative process to, to help talent build their audiences and then we can assign them into uh, you know, different verticals where they can get better support and better uh, commercial and programming opportunities. What, what do you see as sort of the big differentiator for Maker versus some of the other multi-town networks that have popped up? You know, I think that if you get back to the DNA, I think everybody starts in slightly a different place and it may look like everyone's doing the same thing, but this company really is rooted in talent. Um, it was a talent first company, it remains a talent first company. Uh, our goal is to work very collaboratively with the talent and try and provide the depth of services they need because production is also in our DNA. We've been able to figure out a way to do high value, lower cost production. What's the real big opportunity here? Does, you know, sort of online video or, you know, what we think of as streaming video, is that become a TV replacement? Look, right now, we, we did some research with Nielsen recently, and we, 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 they looked at a bunch of data that we provided them, and they gave us some data to look at. And, and we're seeing that, at least from our perspective, we're probably the largest distributor of content to millennials in the US. So we're, we're producing a lot of programming that's going to young people. Are they watching broadcasts? Some, but I think they're spending a disproportionate amount of time online. And so I think that the opportunity is going to be to get marketers to truly understand that this is where this audience lives. And I believe that the, the traditional broadcast is what's being taxed and what's coming on and growing is the, 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 the consumption of online video.